All right, picking up where we left off at, uh, the United Nations, all right? The charter meeting was held in San Francisco, and of uh, the 45 delegates the United States sent, 44 were members of the CFR, as we've discussed earlier, uh, looking at the Council on Foreign Relations. All right, uh, most every nation on Earth has since ratified the United Nations Charter and become a member. The head of the uh, American delegation and the president of the charter meeting of the United Nations was Alger Hiss, a council for foreign relations member, and in 1948, he just so happened to also be convicted after being indicted by a federal grand jury of being a communist spy and was sentenced to two consecutive five-year prison terms. Now, the world body of the UN has done a horrendous job at fulfilling its promises. It's allowed the near complete takeover of Palestine to create the modern Zionist Israel state, <coughs> excuse me, and helped submerge the sovereignty of most nations, including our own, through a number of sister and subsidiary groups such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Health Organization, and others and is now leading the charge for climate change treaties that will transfer more wealth away from America. The one nation that imagines it's free and is armed well enough to resist one world government and Roman rule. But we're going to get into how they plan to deal with that. Uh, now let's look at the false flag and the completion of this nonsense. September 11, 2001 in a spectacular and horrifying series of events, Americans woke up to find the iconic symbol of its prosperity, the World Trade Centers, crash and burn through a poorly investigated series of attacks by hijacked aircraft that also attacked the Pentagon. Blamed on radical Islamist revolutionaries uh, led by Osama bin Laden and his Al-Qaeda network, Questions abound still to this day about the bin Laden family's business ties to the Bush family and their joint partnership in the Carlyle Group, which is a private investment and venture capital group that specializes in acquisition of high-tech and military startup companies, whose principal owners are the bin Laden family, the Bush family, and Tony Blair, who was the once Prime Minister of England at that time of the start of the war on terror that resulted from these said attacks. Looking deeper into the Carlyle group, the 9-11 um, part of the conspiracy that started over 2,000 years ago, believe it or not, to create a one world government ruled by Rome using divide and conquer warfare, the home of Gnosticism, the religion that the false version of true Christianity is largely built on, Persia is once again on the verge of suffering a Roman-led war by the United States and by Zionist Israel. The stage is being rapidly set to have the final world war turn the three major religions of the world upon one another to eliminate them and a majority of the world's human population along with it. Political events are being manipulated to mimic the Roman Bible's prophecy and technology now exists to mimic acts of God as the prophecies foretold. All right, this is how they plan to administer the, the final leg of this new world order situation. All right, let's take a look now at Earth Day. Founded by the U.S. Senator Gaylord Nelson in 1970, it is now celebrated in over 175 countries every year all right every year it's about getting people to take awareness in their environment it's aimed at the climate control and environmentalist camp but the truth is the earth is our environment wars rage across the planet a worldwide economic crisis is going on more people are starving of malnutrition than ever before even though on the surface they appear to be morbidly obese. Pandemic diseases are on the rise and religious differences have the world and its Roman governments on the verge of an all-out war over the fate of Israel. Or should I say the fake Zionist Khazar, proselyte Israel. 
An Israel that does little to foster peace thanks to Zionist government and movements controlled by the Papal Rothschild family that constantly fans the flames of religious intolerance and hatred. As or the U.S. take a look at your money at the pyramid on the back of your one dollar bill and the inscription in Latin that surrounds it. Look at our nation's capital full of Roman edifices and carved and adorned inside out with Masonic and Rosicrucian symbols and art. Ask yourself why all the science, law, and horticulture is based on Latin language, even though it's been a dead language since the fall of Rome in the German tribes. Why is our money attached to nothing and controlled by one international banker who gained his power, wealth, and titles from Rome and the Pope? Why does the Vatican have such incredible power and wealth over so many of our worldwide institutions, even while it can stand apart from them, not be found by them yet benefit from them why because we live in Rome today that's why the Roman Empire that never died that has been manipulating us to conquer ourselves and our very own world for it so in conclusion where does this leave us as far as the historical aspect well now you know where everything started from the roots and the origins of this new world new world order situation so now where do we go from here and how what is the plan to take down america because that's what it boils down to all right but let's take a little detour because what you're about to see is the methodology that has been used on the american people since I want to say 1980 beginning around 1980 81 to between 80 yeah between 80 84 that's really the, the height of this it's called propaganda it's called social engineering it's called by many names propaganda social engineering MK ultra mind control What's the tool they use? How can they get everybody to be controlled? How can they implant suggestions and false memories and things into the mind of the people? I'm here to tell you it's been a secret government plan that has been going on for decades and the method that they use is the television. It's the media. Television and movies, primarily television because of the way television is designed and the flicker rates they can plant these suggestions into your mind you would think ah oh, that's weak that's not going to do anything but over the course of thousands of hours the and that's how long it usually takes to program certain things into the into your mind even false memories and things of that nature and it, it, it's 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 done to, to it's in an attempt to dumb down the society so that you can't think straight so that you can't put two thoughts together so that you can't walk through the process of processing information so like here in this clip that you see before you so if guns kill people I guess pencils misspell words cars drive drunk and spoons make people fat all right well, again, this is critical thinking. It's taking a logical conclusion, taking something to its far end logical conclusion, where it ends up. Okay? Guns are not the problem. People are the problem, not the guns. If guns were outlawed today, people would find knives and bats or even use their bare hands to kill someone. If a human being wants to take another human being's life, they will find multiple ways that they can do it. So, by maintaining the flicker rate, you can insert memories, you can insert things, you can make up appear down and vice versa, all through subliminal messaging. Which leads us to the phenomenon of the Mandela Effect. 
understand that by making everything cybertronic and electronic and digital putting everything online everything into one mainframe computer you can artificially implant memories you don't need to necessarily microchip people you can just hypnotize them through the television through the flicker rates of the television so that brings us to this Mandela effect it is nothing for them to do revisionist history they control the online situation so they can go and change whatever they want and because few people own the originals to anything these days it's easy for them to say nah you just had it all wrong it's burn stain instead of burn steam and it goes on and on and on also with the whole flat earth situation they can make you think that the earth is flat they can make you think anything it is so easy to plant suggestions into people through mass hypnosis it's called the power of suggestion they can suggest anything they do it every day they have they have the the the, the masses fighting themselves fighting amongst each other and understand that your enemy even though the elites are doing this so they can control the masses and keep everyone dumb it's they're not even your enemy the the Rothschilds and the central bank at the end of the day is really not your enemy your enemy is spiritual your enemy is Satan the devil himself the dark lord the prince of darkness that is your true adversary now I know some of you are gonna say I don't believe in that okay that's fine just because you don't believe in something does not mean it does not exist you need to understand that even if you don't believe in such a thing the power elite definitely believe in it they believe in it so much that they have dedicated and devoted their lives to it and to see to your destruction all right that's why you see the rise of Satanism and satanic cults you see the rise of movies about witches and warlocks and wizards and magic that's why you see the rise of black magic powers and one of those is the power over the mind the power of deception there is a spirit of deception that is wreaking havoc and the best way to destroy people is through the divide and conquer so they have agents that they have employed in just about every aspect of society they have algorithms on the internet posing as people and writing fake news stories and um, spamming people's blogs and other things of that nature so that you know if you if you see you got haters on your YouTube channel most of those are robots and agents all right on the other side most of them working in the basement of the Department of Defense their job is to quell all dissent all right so that's what they do and you look at their accounts they have no history on their accounts no videos no nothing all right it's just the way it is look at how successful this empire has built itself out it built itself out over decades with no opposition they were successful enough to assassinate a president in broad daylight in front of everybody and get away with it they were able to assassinate all the leaders of the civil rights movement they took out everybody they took out Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and the, the head of the Black Panther Party and all these people right before the public's eyes and nothing happened it shut down there's there hasn't been another King since there's been no true uh, black leadership since then they've destroyed it and this is something that's been happening for the longest time that's why you can't get out of the matrix you can't escape it it's impossible because the matrix has made itself invincible just on an intellectual basis you don't have the mental power to even get through it you don't have the mental power to even grasp what's going on 
there, 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 there are going to be some that are going to be offended even by this video because I'm talking about things like this. But the issue is not to offend anyone. The truth is as offensive as it is. So what are some of these tactics? Well, look how they use language to confuse the masses, okay? Euphemisms. Instead of calling it a murder, they'll say, ah, oh, it was a vehicular homicide. They have all these different wordings to take the blow away from what something really is. And, and again, I do not mean to offend anyone. I'm trying to educate and show you how they're using divide and conquer, how they're deceiving the masses. All right? That's what they're doing. Okay? For instance, they'll say, instead of calling someone gay or calling someone, a, a, you know, homosexual, um, they'll say, oh, th uh, this person is a same-gendered uh, lover or something of that nature. It's ridiculous, okay? Um, instead of saying sodomite, they say, you know, this person is um, gender neutral or gender fluid. All these different things. Why do you think they're pushing this so much? They're pushing it because as long as they can keep you lovers of pleasure, lovers of the flesh, and keeping your mind on fleshly things, you won't think about anything other than that because your mind will be so full of that. All right? And again, this is not an attack on the LGB community. I have members of my extended family uh, that are uh, that are gay, okay? Um, male and female. So this is not a stab at them. The truth be told, I'd rather hang out with some of them than some of the straight people. Some of them are some of the coolest, most loving people I've ever met in my life. So this is not about that. I'm trying to demonstrate and show you how they're using divide and conquer to keep everyone suppressed. Okay, so then what do they do? They take members of that community and pit them against people who are heterosexual. All right, so then you have this big clash. All right, so there's a war that's been started there. So now the, 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 the gays are pushing for their rights and they want to be married and everything else, while in the mainstream media, they're, they're constantly dogging um, marriage and, 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 and dogging males and men. You don't see strong male images anymore. It's almost like being a strong masculine male is frowned upon and it's anathema. All right, you're ostracized if you're a strong male. They want you to be an effeminized male. All right, they want you to basically be a woman. So we exalt woman, and then we destroy male, strong male images, and then they attack the family again, divide and conquer. They sent scud missiles into the the family homes. So you divide families. So the divorce rate is like 80 percent now. All right. And then it gets to the point where the, the logical conclusion of attacking marriage is to destroy family to get to the point where people don't even want to get married anymore. They say, what's the point? I don't need a piece of paper, right? So now you have dysfunctional families, all right? And there, um, it's ridiculous. You got children rising up against their parents and, and killing their parents and all types of just craziness within the slave base, all right? If you're not an elite, you're considered a slave. So they have all this chaos going on on the street front, on the home front, while the elite's sitting back laughing and, and getting rich off of the warfare. How are they getting rich off the warfare? Because they're selling you armaments to keep the fight going. How are they doing that? By telling you, you know, you form organizations, and then they, they sell you products and movies and market. They're actually marketing towards certain stereotypes and things. If you look at the average commercial, you can tell who they're talking to. They don't have to say, okay, this the following uh, commercial is, that it is, is, is going to be for black people in the hood. So if you don't live in the hood and you're not black, please um, step away from the TV set. No. They just throw it out there. And automatically, that audience is going to be able to understand that, that that commercial is for them. 
case in point, look at the Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials, but showing rap and the person of and, and and they show you know the people that they're talking to. They put those people in the video. It's all marketing ploys. Everything is. So you know in certain commercials who they're talking to because the people they put in the commercial are going to look like the people they're trying to reach. So you have all these psychological warfare operations going on simultaneously. It's all psychological warfare against the the American citizens. It's against the citizenry. Psychological warfare against the citizenry. All right, and then they go back and they change history. They rewrite the textbooks. They make you think you're going crazy. Like, oh, this thing never existed. It was it, you. You just remember it wrong. So millions of people are remembering wrong. No, they've been playing with your mind. It's psychological warfare. Nothing else. Even making you think that they can stop time and reverse time and their alternate realities and all this other nonsense. We'll get into that later, but for now, you just I just want you to understand that at the end of the day, this is all psychological warfare. Just look at you. Do a cursory glance of YouTube on any given day. Look how many Armageddon uh, videos there are. Everyone's talking about the dollar collapsing, the U.S. collapsing. Uh, all you know, collapse, collapse, collapse. The end of the dollar, the collapse, that's all that they've been telling, they've been doing that for years, since I've been on YouTube, since 2008, 2009, that's all you've been hearing about, is the death of the dollar, the dollar ain't died yet, alright, yeah, it's down today on, on, on the exchange, it's, it's 93.45 as we talk, probably gonna hit 92 before it's all said and done, but it's still not dead. It's, it's them taking away the paper currency and replacing it with digital. Even the collapse and the crash that everyone's talking about, all they're going to do is turn off the electronic mechanism so you can't access your money and use your credit card. That's not a crash. That's not a collapse. That's them starving everyone to death on purpose to make you beg and crawl for the new world order agenda. Until next time, keep your head up. Be encouraged.